G'day everyone, just want to touch on the topic of designing guitar pedal effects. So we're talking about how do you make a schematic, how do you come up with a schematic to design your own effect. Um, how do people do it? I get this question all the time and um, I don't really sort of avoid it as such but I've never really looked into it a hell of a lot because I'm not really the best person to actually talk to on this topic. So I'm just going to touch on this and it might send you in the right direction to where you, where you need to look to learn more about the topic. So firstly, I just want to briefly explain my history with, with, um, with uh, electronics. Um, we're going into the stream of electronics engineering when we're talking about um, making schematics and things like that and making your own effect. Um, so maybe if you're young and you're thinking about um, a, a future in electronics and you're interested in guitar pedals, um, you might get the right direction or a bit of advice on um, what you need to do um, to, to do that. So what's my history with um, um, electronics um, in general? Well, it's actually pretty limited. When I was young, about 16 to between the age of 16 to 18, uh, I did a little bit of electronics at, um, at high school um, and I w end ended up going on to TAFE. Uh, what the hell's TAFE? Um, it's kind of like a government um, education system um, uh, for, for when, you leave, when you leave high school. Um, so it's, it's like a poor man's university pretty much. Um, because I didn't get good grades when I was when I was in high school. I was too busy, I don't know, distracted by girls and doing stupid stuff and bands and music and all that sort of stuff that I didn't really focus on my studies, which is kind of regret regrettable at this stage, which is another reason why I'm making this video. Because if you're young and you're going to school and you maybe maybe you watch my channel and, and you're interested in all this sort of stuff, now's the time to focus. You need to focus on mathematics and maybe a little bit of physics as well, but mainly mathematics because there's quite a bit of mathematics when you're dealing with electronic engineering. You can still make a guitar pedal effect, let me just say this right now, without learning the theoretical fundamentals of electronics, right? You can do that. In fact, guitar pedals is one of the best things to learn from because it's quite simple um, in that respect. Um, and you don't need to know the ins and outs of a schematic to design a guitar pedal effect, or should I say, not so much design, but modify an existing effect. You don't need to know all that sort of stuff, but by George, it's a hell of a lot easier if you do. So the only th education I had, um, going back to what I was saying before, was six months of TAFE, um, and we learned the very basics of electronics in that, and it went in one ear and out the other. Um, I, I, it was only when I came back to building guitar pedal effects ten years later. There was only a small amount of that information I actually retained. I remembered a few bits and pieces. Um, it gave me a little bit of a great of of a, of a base to work on. Um, but even now, I don't know a hell of a lot about electronics um, engineering. If you gave me a task to build, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. I could modify something, an existing schematic, and I know roughly how. Um, schematics work but I don't know the ins and outs and equations and all that sort of stuff. Of course back in the day when I was learning at TAFE um, everyone was pushing towards computers so that's the stream that I actually ended up going down and I'm not sure if that's done a backflip these days but probably there's probably more um, demand for an electronics engineer than there was back when I was learning. Um, the electric, electronics engineering um, uh, stream was not the popular one, the computer was, the computer stream was, and I'm glad I did that base course in electronics because it does help you when you go and do another subject like computers. Um, my IT friends that don't know anything about electronics, um, they don't have a, that fundamental understanding of how um, electronics work, um, electronics um, kind of, you know, the, the uh, f flow of um, continuity and things with wires and if something breaks what's wrong with it. If you open up a computer and you don't know anything about electronics and I open up a computer and I know a bit about electronics I can see that that capacitor is blown and that's the reason why the board doesn't work, the motherboard doesn't work or whatever and you replace it. Um, so it's, it's a bit of an advantage to actually have that um, no matter what subject you're doing. So to learn more about electronics, you want to, you want to learn a bit about electronics now. This is my advice uh, and, and there's 
people that watch my channel, I know that know a lot more about this topic than I do, and I encourage them to leave comments in the um, um, down below the video um, so that other people can read. Uh, take into account that a lot of people that watch my channel, they don't know anything about electronics. So like, it's best to keep things nice and simple, and that's what I try and do with all my videos. So, in a simple manner, I'll explain some things that you should learn um, that, to to get a, a, a base work for what you can then move on to more complicated things. Okay, electronics is a massive field. I can't cover everything in this video. I'm just going to pick a few things that I think are important. And the first one, the most obvious one, and you're probably going to be sick to death of hearing this, is Ohm's law. But you have to know it. Um, you, you 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 just do. And the Ohm's law triangle. Look, Google image Ohm's, Ohm's law triangle is a really good way to remember Ohm's law. Off the top of your hat, you, if you if you can remember how that triangle works, you'll you'll always know the the combination of the formula. It makes it nice and simple. So Ohm's law is, Ohm's law is a good one, but I'd probably almost say that that is not the thing that I use the most. Just got an email. Um, not the thing I use the most. Um, I would go on to things like um, other other things that you should look at. Um, is resistors, um, resistors in series and parallel, and capacitors in series and parallel. Um, they're, they're easy, you don't need to be a mathematic genius to understand this stuff, by the way. It's all very straight, it's all very simple. If I can learn it, trust me, you can, because I'm hopeless at mathematics. Um, um, resistors in series and parallel, capacitors in series and parallel. They're, they're important, so, so learn on those, those topics. The other thing too is to look at um, what would be next. Voltage dividers and how a voltage divider works. Very, a very simple circuit. Um, if you can understand how a voltage divider works, you'll understand how the volume pot on a guitar pedal works. That's pretty much how that works. It's, it's, it, is, it is the base to understand how a potentiometer works as well. Um, so it's important, really. That one is... I, I, I think that one's important. I learned. Once I learned how the voltage divider works and, and applied that to a volume control, all of a sudden the light bulb clicked. Um, that was a very important um, revelation for me. Um, and also, when you're looking at low pass filters and high pass filters, um, I was asking a lot of questions about low pass filters and high pass filters. Um, in, in a nutshell, again, because I'm bombarding you with information here, just, just quickly, um, a, a high pass filter um, allows high frequencies to pass and a low pass pass filter allows low frequencies to pass so they're like it's like a cut and they're used all the time in guitar pedals um, for tone shaping um, so I, I could not work out how they worked and I asked so many questions on the guitar pedal forums and people were talking to me like I must have come across like I was dense because I just couldn't work it out and the answers I was getting back just did not make sense and like a, <laughs> I hate to say a lot of things in life you actually worked. I worked it out on my own. Um, it's reactants. You have to. You have to understand how reactants works to understand how a low pass and a high pass filter work. So work those. So learn those two things: um, reactants, and then have a look at low pass and high pass filters, and do a Google for music. M U S I Q E. Um, low pa uh, pass filter. Do a Google for that. Music pass filter. And it'll come up with a calculator um, page where you can where you can muck around with some figures and work out how it actually cuts um, and passes um, frequencies. And um, at that page, I go to all the time. It's really good. Um, it has it has a diagram. There's the schematic diagram of a low pass filter and a high pass filter, so that you can remember which one you're working with, etc. Um, so that's also very good. So low pass filters, high pass filters, and reactants together. Learn reactants first, how that works, and then look at low pass filters and high pass filters. So we could probably go on to boosts and things like that, um, and they kind of get a little bit complicated. In fact, a transistor boost is quite a complicated circuit, so I'm not really going to touch that one. And it's also mathematically heavy. Um, that's something that you might want to look at once you've learnt the things that I'm telling you here. Um, I, you will probably walk away from, if you're not good, if you're starting out and you're not very good with mathematics, you'll probably walk away from um, a boost um, explanation, mathematical explanation, bamboozled. Um, uh, if you don't have an engineer's mind like I don't, um, so I probably wouldn't recommend that. But one good one with an op amp distortion is 
I can't remember, I think it's Cook Your Own Distortion. Um, it's a General Guitar Gadgets page. Um, Google Cook Your Own Distortion. I'll leave a comment if I've stuffed that up down the bottom here. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Cook Your Own Distortion um, or Cook Your Own Op Amp Distortion. Basically read from the top of that page to the bottom. It is an excellent explanation um, of how to how an op amp distortion works and I had one epiphany after the other when I read through that page. It's very good. Um, absolute, absolutely highly recommend it. If you don't know much about um, guitar pedals and, and electronics and you read that page, you'll just walk away from going, oh my god, that just made so much sense. Excellent resource. Beavis Audio is also an excellent resource for beginners. Unfortunately, it's not around anymore. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened to it, which is a damn shame because it was um, so well explained for beginners. Um, he, he, he's got just an absolute talent for explaining complicated things in a very simple manner. Um, and unfortunately, that website's not around anymore. I checked a couple of weeks ago, it wasn't around. I don't know if it's back again, but um, it's a kind of a bit of a shaky, um, uh, it has, a, has a shaky appearance. It's one minute there and the next minute it's not, but I think it's gone now, um, which, is a, which is a real. It's a, it's a real shame because it was doing such a good service to the um, guitar pedal community. Um, but there you go. Um, if it comes back, it comes back. Google Beavis Audio. If, it, if it's back now when you're watching the video, then hopefully hopefully it is back now because, it, yeah, it's great. Uh, but um, not around anymore, so not going to help us. Um, so what, what else would be left? Another good article I'd, I'd encourage you to read. Just to, this is just to whet your appetite. Um, it's the very basics, the very base, um, and you can use this as a footstep to go on to further things. Um, but ha have a read of uh, an article, um, uh, uh, it's on MXR Distortion Plus, and it's written by Brian Wampler, who explains how that circuit works. It's another op amp distortion, um, so it's a good one. Um, it's nice and simple to read, and how to modify it as well. So that is, in a nutshell, like I said before, a sample box of electronic engineering. These are the most simplest things I can think of that you can learn about um, some, some of the basics on how to modify and how to build an, an effect um, and the exp explanations behind how the effect works, etc. So start with those things. And if you get to the other end of those things that I've just thrown at you and, and you have an appetite for more, then move on to more complicated things. Um, from then on, but if you don't know anything about electronics and you want to learn, I would highly recommend starting with those things that I've that I've that I've um, thrown at you. Um, if one of them's not making much sense, just flick it off to the side and come back to it later on. So I hope that gets you um, some sort of base introduction into electronics. Like I said, for the people that have more experience in um, engineering and and um, schematic design and things like that. Um, leave comments below, in, uh, another email, leave con co comments below, encourage, encourage the younger generation um, to, to stand on our shoulders and reach for higher heights, um, and um, yeah, um, thanks for watching this video, and, um, and I, I hope it helped in some way, cheers.